Well, good morning and welcome to St. Paul. Thank you so much for joining us for worship, whether you're able to be here in person or worshiping with us online or possibly even by radio in the parking lot. We are glad that we can gather together to worship the Lord. Uh, for here in the United States of America, today is our Independence Day, and so we celebrate our freedoms that we have on July the 4th. Uh, I'm sure that some of you are aware there are many places in this world where people are not able to gather together freely to worship. I know that in my last congregation, we had people from a variety of countries who had fled their country because they were not able to gather freely. And so as we begin this time of worship, uh, let's pray together, giving God thanks and praise for our country and for the freedoms in which we have. So let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this time that you have enabled us to gather together to worship. Today, on this day of July the 4th, the Independence Day for people in the U.S., we give you our thanks and our prayers for your blessing to rest upon this nation. We thank you for the freedoms that you have given us to where we are able to gather together freely without fear of any persecution without fear of any intervention from the military or police but yet we can gather together to honor you to sing our praises and to worship you and so on this July 4th we pray for your blessing to rest upon this country we pray for all of our elected leaders and ask for your wisdom and your grace to be upon them and we also humbly ask that your spirit will be poured upon this land, that your spirit will move not only in this place and in our community, but that your spirit will move throughout this country to create a great revival, a great spiritual awakening, so that truly this nation will turn to you to honor and to glorify you. And now as we come together for worship, whether it be online or in person, work your spirit in our lives. Open us up to you so that truly you'll be glorified. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, let's join together in singing our opening hymn. It's number 696, America the Beautiful. And so you're invited to stand as you're able as we sing.
may be seated. And welcome once again to St. Paul United Methodist Church. My name is Clifton Vaughn. I'm the pastor of the congregation. It's always a great joy when we can come together for worship. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you especially for the guests that we have with us. We know that each Sunday we have guests who join us for a time of worship, whether in person or online. And so thank you for taking the time to join with us in the worship of Almighty God. If you're worshiping with us online, you're invited to click on the online attendance link, and that way we will know that you are worshiping with us so that we can in turn reach out and encourage you on your journey of faith. We all will later on in today's service also celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. And here at St. Paul, we believe in what's called open communion. Therefore, all are welcome to the table. It's not that you have to be a member of this church or any congregation. As long as you are sorry for your sins and you place your faith in Jesus Christ, then you'll be invited to come. And so thank you again for joining us for this time of worship. And let's continue in our worship of God. As we celebrate our freedoms today, let us not forget that all freedoms come from the hands of merciful God. And as this morning, we partake of the sacrament of Holy Communion. We have that freedom also. Freedom that comes to us through Christ to accept or to reject. So join with me now as we give our invitation to the sacrament and the prayer of confession and pardon. Please join with me at the appropriate time. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Please cleanse us from our sins and iniquity. Restore to us the joy of salvation that comes from you. Right. <coughs> Let us reflect in a moment of silence for all those things for which we should be thankful, not the least of which is our freedom. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. You are invited to stand and share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let me remind you that we still have COVID restrictions, so please refrain from too much physical contact. Okay, you may remain standing 
And let's join together in singing our hymn of praise. It's number 697, America 697. You may be seated. And as we continue in our worship, I invite our children to come forward for our time together. Come on down. All right. We're going to hang out right here. You're great. Any other children in the midst? Okay, that's it. All right. Hey, before you go off to Children's Church, we want to pray a prayer of blessing on you and your time together with Mrs. Amy and all the other children. So let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for these, your children. Uh, we know first and foremost, Lord Jesus, that they are made in your image and you love them dearly. And so we do pray for your blessing to rest upon them in their time in children's church and all children everywhere. We pray that you'll draw them closer to you and help them to love you and trust you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You go off to Children's Church or back to your seats. All right, and as we continue in our worship of God, we go forward to that time where we can worship God through our giving. Uh, however, before we continue with our offering, I wanted to share with you that we did have a member of our church pass away recently, and that was Georgia Roberts. Uh, she had been in the nursing home for the last several years, and her service of celebration will be tomorrow at 2 o'clock here in this location. Uh, but let's be praying for all of Georgia's friends and family, especially be praying for her son Jeff, for he and Kim and their children. Uh, we've also received news this past week that Ann uh, Alton, one of her sisters, passed away. And so let's be praying for Ann and her family. And then let's remember those others in our church family who need healing and need God's grace and mercy. And so let's pray together as our ushers come forward to receive our offering. Let us pray. Dear God, we do give you our thanks and our praise that truly you are with us in this life. Whether we are in living in times of joy and in celebration 
or in times of pain or in times of grief. We give you our thanks for you are there. And so today we thank you for Georgia and for her life. We thank you for the joy that she brought to life. And now we know, Lord Jesus, that through her trust in you, you have given her renewed life, life everlasting in your presence and so we thank you for that and we pray for your grace and your mercy to be with all who miss her with all who grieve her passing we pray especially for Jeff for Kim for their children and for all of George's family we also pray for Anne and all of her family and we lift up to you those members of our church who need healing, who need your grace and your strength. And today we pray for Bob and for Sue Ann and for many others. And now as we continue in the worship of you, we offer you our tithes and our offerings. And we pray for your blessing to be upon these gifts. Use them to extend your love and grace throughout this community and throughout the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, please remain standing and join with me in singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. It's found on number 717, and we'll just be singing a few of the verses that are listed. And so let's join together in singing.
Amen. You may be seated. In the center part of your bulletins, uh, there are two inserts. One is the order of worship, and the next is some sermon notes for today. Uh, you're welcome to use that however you wish, and then on the back you have some discussion questions as well as some daily Bible readings. And so I do encourage you to take that home uh, to enable this message to go deeper into your life and so that you can interact with God's Word as well. Uh, today on this July 4th celebration, this day of freedom, uh, we remember the freedoms that we have, the freedoms that we have as a country and also the freedoms that we have in Christ. Uh, I know for some of you, as I've had conversations with you in the last year, uh, you are very excited about living here in the United States and the freedoms that we have, but you also feel that your freedoms are under attack whether that may be to the different political systems or the political parties that have come on or maybe due to the restrictions that have happened in the last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic or a variety of cultural reasons. And so the question becomes on this July 4th is where do you find your hope? Uh, where is your hope? Uh, where is the hope for your life? Is it in the country and in the military might? Uh, is it in your political party that you follow? And, and I know for some of you, you have rejoiced in the last several months of what has occurred. And for some of you, you're very sad of what has occurred. And, and so it's that question of where does your hope lie? Uh, where is your hope? Is it in your wealth and in your family background? Is it in your health and in the strength that comes from that? Uh, where is your hope? I know as I have carried on this journey in the last year of uh, entering back into the U.S. and entering into watching the news again and really paying attention uh, to what's going on in this country, what I've seen is that people still love their country and they love what's going on, but they're deeply divided and they're conflicted. And as, as we've seen the culture uh, begin to push things that are, are not founded in Christian beliefs and are not scriptural, then it seems like the world is falling apart and our country is falling apart. And, and so that hope that we had begins to kind of downward spiral. And for some, it's very evident that if you found your hope in your physical strength, you found your hope in your health, well, you're not always going to be healthy. And, and one day that time will come when your heart doesn't work right or when you develop that bad news of a cancer diagnosis or something happens and you realize what you put your hope in is truly hopeless. And this is a variety of reasons. It could be a, a stock market that's going down or the housing bubble bursts or whatever it may be. But where do you put your hope? And sometimes we put our hope in things that will end up not being there for us. And it ends up where we feel that we're hopeless. But as Christians, but as people who hold on to how God revealed himself in Jesus Christ, we know that our hope is in Jesus. That regardless of what's going on in our world, regardless of what's going on with our health or our bank account, regardless of what's going on in Washington, D.C. or in the political uh, world, we can find our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we've been talking about as this Pentecost series is that we are called to put on the armor of God. We are called to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and allow his spirit to live in our lives so that we can hold on to our faith no matter what's going on around us. All right, so we've had a key memory verse throughout this series. If you need help saying it, it's on the back of your sermon notes. It comes from the book of Colossians. It's also going to be on the screen, and let's say this verse together. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. 
We have victory in Christ. We have victory in Christ. That we have victory for our lives, no matter what goes on around us, through our faith in Jesus Christ. For he has transferred us from that kingdom of despair. He has transferred us from that kingdom of hopelessness, that kingdom of death. He's transferred us from that into his eternal kingdom. And for that we rejoice But we are also still living in the here and now, where we're being bombarded by a spiritual warfare. And that's what the Apostle Paul shares with the church in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Especially in verses 10 to 13, he sets the scene to remind them that we are living in a spiritual world where there's dark forces, where there's evil spirits that want to destroy our lives, to destroy our hope, to destroy our faith. And so it's that call to put on the armor of God and to stand strong. And so we've been looking at the different components of the armor, and today we're going to continue looking at that with Ephesians chapter 6, verse uh, 17, where it's talking about putting on the helmet of salvation. So it's only one verse. Let me share it with you. It's Ephesians 6, verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, as Christians, whenever we read the Bible, whether uh, we read it in as a book form or on our phones, whatever it may be, we believe that it is the Word of God for us, the people of God. And so thanks be to God. Okay, so today we are called to put on that helmet of salvation, to take up the helmet of salvation. Now, the Greek word for take there is really that understanding of receiving or accepting a gift. It's like if I was going to give you a gift and it was beautifully wrapped, which means I didn't wrap it, which means my wife Lindsay wrapped it. Let's say it's a beautifully wrapped gift and I give it to you, you still have a choice. You can either say thank you and then just leave it there and and never touch it again, or you can take it and you can tear it open and you can see what I gave you. It's a gift, and this is what Jesus has given us. He's given us this gift of salvation. Take up the helmet of salvation. Now, where Paul is drawing from is from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah in chapter 59. Now, where Isaiah chapter 59 is, it's really where the Old Testament prophet is receiving this vision from God, how God is going to send a warrior, and how this warrior will come to save them. And this warrior will be dressed in mighty armor and will bring about victory. And so what we see is in Isaiah 59, 17, is this helmet of salvation, where it says, He put on righteousness as his breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. It's this uh, wonderful prophecy to the prophet Isaiah of what God will do, that God will send the Messiah, the chosen one, the Christ, the anointed one, to bring about salvation, to bring about victory, to bring righteousness and holiness to his people. And that's what we see that Jesus did, that God saw us in our brokenness, God saw us in our pain. God saw us in our need. And he sent his son Jesus to be victorious, to live for us, to die for us, to be raised in new life for us so that we can trust in him and receive that gift of salvation. I love how Paul puts it in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 23, where it says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Or I love how the New American Standard Translation puts it. It says, the free gift of God is salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. It's this free gift that God gives us. It's this gift that God gives us. And we are invited to take that helmet 
and place it upon our heads, that center of our thinking, that center of our thoughts, that center that makes our decisions going one way or the other, we're to take that gift of salvation and put it upon us. All right, so what does that mean for us? I, I think one is that it gives us that freedom. It gives us that freedom from the penalty of sin. Or another way of saying that is it grants us forgiveness. Uh, there are many times when we do things that we know we shouldn't do, whether that be online with a certain comment that hurts somebody else, or whether that's a certain thought that we have that pulls us down that downward spiral, or whether it's an action that we know that we shouldn't do, but we do it anyway. And yet in Jesus, when we take on that helmet of salvation, then we take on God's grace and his mercy, and it forgives us of our sins. 1 John phrased it this way in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It's as we take on that salvation then truly we are forgiven. Now, it reminds me of this movie that I love. It's an older movie. It's called The Mission from 1986. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but as part of that, there is a, a Spanish soldier uh, who is just overwhelmed by all the atrocities that he did as a soldier. And now as he's come to faith in Christ, he's just overwhelmed by his guilt. And he feels like he has to serve penance to do that and so part of his penance that he feels like he has to do to be forgiven is he gathers up all of his old armor and his old weapons and he ties them together in a net and he feels like if he can drag this net all the way to the top of the mountain then maybe God will truly forgive him and so he drags this net up the mountain and it keeps on pulling him back down and he rolls down to the bottom of the mountain and he tries again and he and it pulls him back down and eventually as he's nearing the top of the mountain there's a priest that comes out and cuts the bundle free it's when we put on that helmet of salvation, when we accept Christ for ourselves, that he forgives us wholly and completely. He sets us free so that we can live our lives free from sin, free from guilt, free from shame. We can live our lives as a child of God as we take that helmet of salvation. But it's also that we can be delivered because though we are set free and, and we're given that forgiveness, sometimes we feel trapped. I hear this all the time as a pastor. Well, I'm just the way that I am. This was how I was raised. My father was angry. My grandfather was angry. So I'm going to be angry. That's just who I am. And, and some, it's, it's worse. You can say, well, I was just born from alcoholic parents. And because they were alcoholics, I'm going to be an alcoholic. And that's just who I am. And, or you may say that regarding a certain type of addiction with sexuality or pornography or a certain type of behavior with lying or stealing, whatever it may be. Sometimes we use those excuses saying, okay, God, you've forgiven me, but I'm just trapped. This is just who I am. I'm always going to be addicted, and that's just who I am. And God says, no. God says, no, take this gift of salvation, take this helmet of salvation and put it on you and be delivered. Be completely set free to live a life that's holy and pleasing to God. I love how Paul puts it in Romans chapter 6, verse 22. So right before the one we read earlier, it says in verse 22, but now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. We have been set free from sin. Now, some of us just don't know it. Uh, it reminds me of one of our historical periods here in the United States. Uh, during, well, let me give you the dates. It's in January the 1st, 1863. President Abraham Lincoln signed the Proclamation of Emancipation. And that set free 
all the slaves. It ended slavery. However, a lot of the slaves in the South didn't receive that word. (laughs) They didn't hear about it until June the 19th, 1865, when Major Gordon Granger and his battalion arrived at Galveston Bay and proclaimed freedom to the slaves. Now, they had already had freedom 30 months earlier, but they had not heard that, and they had not begun to live it. You have been set free as you take on that helmet of salvation, and now you are called to live in it. You do not have to be enslaved to your sin. You don't have to be enslaved to your past. You don't have to be enslaved to your habits. You can be set free in Christ. As you take on that gift of salvation, as you put on that helmet of salvation, well, you can have hope. You can have hope. And that's where this hope of salvation is, that truly we can live a life that sets us free from sin. As Methodists, we believe what's called sanctification, that we can be set free from all willful sin. And this is a God's gift of grace for us. And it's also that promise that we have that one day we'll be set free from all sin. Uh, Paul phrased it this way in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. It's that as we take on that helmet of salvation as we trust in him, we are already counted as seated with Christ in the heavens. And so we have that hope of salvation. Paul phrased this way in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 and 9. It says, But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have that hope of salvation as a helmet. We accept that, we place it upon our lives, and we put our hope not in our country, not in our wealth, not in our health, not in our past, not in our family. We put our hope in salvation that comes in Christ. Now, I don't know if you know the story of John Knox or not. Uh, John Knox was in the 1500s, and he was a Presbyterian minister and was very influential in Scotland becoming its own country. Uh, Now, one thing that I would disagree with with John Knox, but he was uh, greatly encouraging a violent overthrow. And so he called his church to gather their arms together and, and create an overthrow so that Scotland would have its own country. Now, obviously, the leaders at that day didn't agree with him, and so he suffered pretty severe persecution, uh, but he's still seen as one of the leaders of the modern country of Scotland. But because of his persecution, uh, he died early, and on his deathbed, he was no longer able to speak, and they were asking him questions about the hopes that he had for Scotland, but also the hopes that he had in Christ. And they asked John as he was about to die, do you still have hope? Do you still have hope? And he pointed up. It's that faith that we have, that God gives us salvation, that our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not even in this country. Our hope is in salvation in Jesus Christ. Romans 5.5 says, and hope is, does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And so today, as we talk about the freedoms that we have as we're living in a world that's being bombarded by spiritual forces, 
we are called by God to take up that helmet of salvation, to put that hope of salvation into our hearts and upon our heads so that we can live a life that's holy and pleasing to him. So will you take up the helmet of salvation? Will you place your hope in Christ and in Christ alone? That's the call that God has for us. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we do celebrate uh, together the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, it's where we can remember in tangible ways uh, that God is with us in this world. Uh, we remember uh, God's heart for us, that he saw us in our need, and he sent his son Jesus for us. And so as we move forward to the blessing of the elements, uh, please join with me in the liturgy as it is found on the screen. And so the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, 
that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us now join together in praying our Lord's Prayer as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite those who are assisting to please come forward. And then here in a moment, you'll be invited to come as the ushers direct. Uh, once again, we believe that this is the Lord's table, and so all are welcome to receive. Uh, you're welcome to come as the ushers direct down the center aisle and come to one of the two stations. You'll be given a piece of bread, and then you can take a small cup of juice. We also have gluten-free wafers that are available upon request or prepackaged items for those who desire. Uh, please just mention your desire, and we'll hand those to you. And then you're welcome to spend any time at the altar rail that you would like. If you would like to receive communion where you are seated, uh, please just notify an usher and then communion will be brought to you. Uh, but this is the Lord's table and you're invited to come as the ushers direct.
Now, if you will, let us stand and affirm our faith together as a community of faith by joining together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing. Well, thank you again for joining us in this time of worship, whether online or in person. Greatly appreciate you being here. Uh, there are many different ways for you to get involved in the life of the church that are mentioned in your bulletin, so feel free to take that home with you. I would remind you that Vacation Bible School is this coming Saturday, so a week from yesterday, so please be keeping that in your prayers, and if you have children at home or grandchildren nearby, please register them for Vacation Bible School and again, be praying for that wonderful outreach to our community. Also, the United Methodist Men will begin meeting again this coming Thursday evening. And so all men are invited and welcome to participate in that event. And then today at 5 o'clock, there's a community worship service being held at the uh, community center. And so you're invited to participate in that at 5 o'clock this evening. Uh, but as we leave this place, receive now this benediction and this blessing, that as we depart from here, may God's Spirit send you forth. May God empower your life, so whether you are at home or at work or at play, you'll be a person of peace. Go in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>